All right, my hot buttered lug nuts, before I get started, I must tell you that there's no filming allowed during a CF Moto demo ride. This is typical for most manufacturers, but the sweet folks at CF Moto granted me access, permitting I didn't squid around on their property. Because as you may know, I am known for my squidding. Whitney, why did you go demo bikes at Coda? Aren't you supposed to be watching MotoGP riders low side during the race instead? Well, if you must know, I love the fit and finish on these bikes. And for whatever reason in this price bracket, that seriously stands out to me. CF Moto gives a about the details and I personally find that valuable as a consumer. So I had my eye on the Ibex 800T, but to the surprise of no one, it was booked for the day. So I must form my opinions during my trip on the S instead. I also didn't have the chance to ride it off road, which I am pretty bummed about. But when the opportunity arises, I will circle back around to the Ibex. By the way, the S doesn't have a quick shifter, spoked wheels, or heated grips in seat. If it were my money, I would definitely opt for the T. Swinging a leg over this bad boy at 5'8", know that I can barely tiptoe it at a seat height of 32.5, but my bike at home is 33, so I'm accustomed to this. Also, look at that shiny and big old TFT. Cries and KLR. Right off the bat, I love the throttle feel of this and the power delivery. It's an agile bike that maneuvers with ease and climbs to highway speeds with no issue. Ergonomically speaking, this is a pretty comfy ride. I could see this as an ADV touring bike for sure. So with only an on-pavement experience, you've got good looks, sexy fit and finish for the price point, good power and agility. I give this bike a solid 8 out of 10. Let's switch over to my lovely Discord for some quality Q&A. All right guys, welcome to the Q&A portion of the video. Since I didn't get to have a really awesome long off-road adventure with the Ibex 800, um, I actually went to my Discord and asked my members if they had any questions. They have tons of awesome questions and if you guys want a piece of the action, head to my Patreon and you guys can get access for as little as $3 a month. Join in on the fun. Also, stay tuned for the end of the Q&A because I'm gonna give you guys some sweet, sweet Discord member updates. Um, lots of awesome, fun stuff happening in there. So let's get started, shall we? All right, Resident Maverick Enthusiast asks, is it better or worse than the KTM it's based on? Since I haven't ridden any KTM ADV bikes, it's hard for me to say anything about that. Um, I will say this, the CF Moto demo truck is going around America this summer Please go check them out. Next question, Suzuki Simp. What's up, Josh? Does Ibex inspire you to travel the world or park it at home? I find this to be a pretty outrageously personal uh, question. Kind of depends on where you're at with your riding. Me personally, I'm looking to live that ADV life as I get older. I wanna be the mom that my kids can't find. Is she in Chile? Is she in Patagonia? Is she in Australia? Where is she? Um, so the Ibex 800T definitely inspires me to travel the world. Um, the flip side of that is like a GS1250 would inspire me to park it at home because that thing is such a behemoth um, and it is daunting. I would park it at home. Or you'd go show it off at, you know, your little coffee meet and greet. There's something just so beefy about the GS that I personally don't want to lug it up a washed out trail, but there are people who definitely want to do that. I'm not that type of person, at least not yet. Um, I'm not a glutton for punishment. So give me something a little less girthy. It's not really necessarily the weight. I, I prefer the heavier bikes off-road, but it's just so wide and top heavy. Full Metal Corgi asks, will it scratch my 1250GS itch? Um, my initial response to you is, how itchy are you? Um, the 1250GS, the, 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 what magnetizes people to it is how girthy, gigantic, behemothy. It's got every bell and whistle on it as well. It has a very commanding presence. There were a lot of GS1250s at Mojave this past weekend. I mean, look at how long it's been around. It's got the history for it. It's got the history to back it up, is what I'm trying to say. It's hard. I would be really curious, Full Metal, if you go to your nearest CF Moto dealer and go look at it. And I'd like to know your thoughts because I know that you've got the 1250 on the, on the mind because you want to do some two up traveling in the future. Are you looking for something that can rip up a fire trail and crush highway miles? Or are you looking for like that commanding on-road presence? Full Metal Corgi continues to ask, does it even pretend to have off-road abilities? Is there a spot for truck nuts and will I instantly become a communist by touching it? I feel like you could take the Ibex 800S off-road and it would be just fine, but that to me is more of a, the sport touring version. 
where the Ibex 800T 100% has off-road abilities. You can just look at a bike and be like, mm, looks pretty good. Looks like you could tear some shit up. Um, it also has an off-road mode. I don't think it's pretending by any means. Is there a spot for tr nu truck nuts? There's a spot for truck nuts. You just have to believe it. You just have to believe in it. Will I instantly become communist by touching it? If we became communist by touching things, we're all screwed. Resident Maverick enthusiast uh, asks, is it a sport tour ADB or is it an actually, or is it actually an ADB? Like I had just mentioned, the Ibex 800S to me is like the comfy highway, mile crushing ADB tour, tourer, tourer. And then um, the Ibex 800T is 100% an actual ADV. They have given you both options because there is a spectrum of ADV riders. Next up, Jake Smith says, coming at two to three grand more than a KLR, is the extra price justified? 100%. I'm trying to wrap my head around the KLR a little bit. Um, Spite has one, it's a 2022. It looks like it's from 1997. If you're into that sort of thing, I get it. I understand the reliability, but unfortunately, if I'm buying a brand new bike, I'm, I'm not concerned about 20 years from now with that bike, but I understand if there are people who are. Don't get me, I'm gonna get caught up in the time is a flat circle thing. I, you know, like with the R9T, it's totally stripped down of tech, right? But what it doesn't have for tech, it makes up in sexy aesthetics. The KLR doesn't do that for me at all. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed it off-road, but yes, this to me, it's like, give me one bell, give me one whistle. The CF Moto Ibex 800 definitely is worth the extra price, in my opinion. Also, just, it's just a nice bike. Go check it out. Go check, I'm here to preach the go check it out motto. Dasco says the Ibex is an old world species of goat known for large horns. What part of this motorcycle best represents the horns? Um, it's truck nuts, duh. Resident Maverick enthusiast says, coming in at Tenere 700, V-Strom 650, PP-Strom 800 pricing, is it better than those? And do you think that if it's just on par that people would buy it over those non-CCP brands? I rode a Tenere 700 this, this weekend in Mojave and I thoroughly enjoyed it, but I liked it for different reason. I don't think it'd be my ADV bike of choice. I think it'd be my trail bike of choice, my my weekend sand ripper. Um, I absolutely hate how the V-Strom and PP-Strom look. Those bikes are so ugly, I would never even consider them. If I was forced to ride it off-road, I'd be making a different video. So for a uh, new manufacturer to kind of step into the ring with a badass bike that looks like it's gonna crush the competition. I hate to say that. The 450 SS says that too. I'm not being paid by CF Moto. That's the truth, um, car alarm. <laughs> it's it's uh, affirming that I'm telling the truth. I do think this is gonna this is gonna hurt some uh, some brand PPs out there. And if it doesn't, we'll make a new video. But I I genuinely think CF Moto is bringing the goddamn heat to the table. With all of that being said, thanks for the awesome questions, everybody. Lots to speculate, lots of good questions. Let's dive into my Discord and see what's going on, what's happening, who's in here, what are y'all doing? I love every single one of you, one of you freaks. All right, Ma resident Maverick enthusiast has sent me a picture of his 1981 XT200, and he's currently doing a top end rebuild. Then he's gonna go ahead and replace the tank and get the wiring sorted. Um, that's awesome. God, that looks like it's gonna take a while. I love old project bikes. I miss it. I miss that life. Also, can we just look at how cute his baby is? He's often T-posing in the kids channel. I love to see it. Thanks. Thanks, Maverick enthusiast. A, for all the awesome questions. B, for being a part of the Discord. And C, for having a cute baby that you feel inclined to share photos of. Thank you. All right, what's Jake Smith up to? He sent me a picture of his roadster taking a nap. Um, looks like it's getting restful slumber on the floor. Not sure what happened. There's see the jack down, down there, so I can only assume. He put a 17 inch rear on the roadster with new sport touring rubber. Next up, a new Morris Magneto for the chopper. I wanna kinda live that chopper life. I know I gotta be patient, I'll get there. 
but hell yeah. Turns out a uh, rear brake doesn't feel right and it was due to a misaligned metal clip. That is old. <laughs> Next up we have Pat Zilla. Pat Zilla sending in a moto motorcycle selfie. Thank you, Pat. Let's, uh, let's read what he's got to say. I don't really understand it, but learning how to ride has pulled me out of a years long slump. Riding just makes me feel free from all the bullshit of the world, if only temporarily anyways. It's a beautiful day and I'm enjoying it. Thank you, Pat, for sharing. It's, I feel you there. Um, riding a motorcycle is what got me off of all of my prescription anxiety meds. To ditch all of those, to toss them in the trash and get into the motorcycle realm was life-changing. It was the first time I felt like a complete person. So thank you for sharing. I love hearing it. Um, that's a big part of why we ride, you know, whether it's to alleviate stress, get rid of ourselves of depression or anxiety, but thank you. Thank you for sharing. Magic Toaster VIP. Not working on anything but my modeling career. So here's some fun stuff from a magical appliance. Doggo is Roxy. Look at sweet Roxy. I wish there was a, a VR option to pet people's other, other people's dogs. Finally got my driveway done. Oh God, I'm so jealous. Mine is, oh, look at that. Oh, oh, that looks good. There's his Ego Energy cover up in the Spites Corner sticker. Love to see it. Ooh, and a Whitney Does butt sticker on the side of his helmet. Thank you, thank you, Magic. Thanks for sharing. Who else we got up in here? Dasco, I know Dasco got a new bike. I'm gonna throw up a picture of it here. It matches his car. Very cute, congrats on the new baby. We got two new ladies on the Discord. Thank you guys so much for joining. Love to hear from you guys. If you are a lady and you wanna chat motorcycles, please, I'm trying to create a fun, awesome environment for you to hop online. There's also an app for your phone that you can chat with us. I'm on there almost every day. So please click, click the Patreon link down below. Get joined, you can hear the stray dog barking. It's time for me to wrap it up. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Sorry I didn't get to ride it off road. Hopefully I'll be given the chance and I will keep you guys posted. <laughs> There's a mechanic who works on my street and I just see some of the most beat up cars ever. I'm like, how is it? You guys hear it on the mic? Um, hopefully there will be part two where I get to ride the Ibex 800T off-road. Um, that's, that's where you really get to see if that, if the bike is for you, right? It's like I've ridden a Tenere 700, Pan Am, and a GS off-road. Also my smart peeling, but, you know, the Pan Am made a really big lasting impression due to all of its tech that it's got. And it was super confidence inspiring, whereas when I was riding the GS, I was crashing over and over again. Um, then again, I was on a 90 mile sand trail. I felt like I was fucking training for a goddamn enduro race or something. So, but it wasn't giving me the confidence that the Pan Am did. Is the Ibex gonna do the same? Is it gonna be different because I'm at a different point in my riding career? I don't know. It's really hard to kind of see what these bikes are gonna do unless you take them off road, bond with them, see what they're all about. But anyways, thanks for watching.